We are here at Always On Stanford Summit, and I'm standing here with Ron Yekatil from Kaltura, who's the CEO. And you guys were on stage yesterday and today, correct? Actually, not today. Not we're today. Off stage today. Off to stage today. So tell unless, me what unless you. Unless I'm missing a session that I need to run on, get on stage. But it was the it's SaaS panel, if I recall. It was the open source gone SaaS panel. Okay, so tell us about that. Tell us about why you ended up in that panel and why you're different. Well, we ended up there. We actually arranged it. Tony uh, happens to be on our advisory board, and he asked me to see if we could arrange uh, for an open source panel, and I invited uh, the rest of them to come and join and to have a good conversation. And it was uh, phenomenal people. Matt Essay, that is also on our advisory board, uh, chaired the panel and led the whole thing. Quarterback that Matt writes for CNET about open source. He's the VP of BizDev for Fresco. And we had people there from uh, all over, from Drupal, from uh, Spike Source, from a lot of different great companies. Satish from uh, Redpoint talking about how investors look at open source. He was a founder of Zimbra as well. So it's a good team. Yeah, it was uh, a great lineup. The discussion lineup. was about A, how there's a strong trend towards open source lately and why. B, there's also a strong uh, trend towards SaaS. And C, surprisingly enough, although it may seem for some a little bit conflicting, there are more and more combination of open source and SaaS. And the question was, A, does it go together? And if so, B, why? Uh, and that's what we kind of looked at. And I, and I can say from the standpoint of Kultura, uh, which is kind of the leader in the open source video uh, realm, we, for those who have not yet heard of Kultura, have started an open source company that brings together all facets of open source and enables platforms and websites to integrate and deliver functionalities around rich media in an integrated fashion. The first ones to do so by way of open source. So we call ourselves the Mozilla of, of video or the MySQL of video. And we have 35,000 sites that are using us within the last 10 months alone, launching video in places like Wikipedia by the end of the year and then a bunch of different companies all around. Um, in our case, we've come up with a complete open source offering that basically disrupts a historical proprietary market by giving the vendors the ability to have a solution that they could self-host on their own firewall, own in a way, because they have the code, extend, enhance, and integrate easily because it's open source. And to have that kind of become the ubiquitous platform through all these different integration points, transcending beyond media into other verticals. Because when you look into government, healthcare, uh, and uh, e-learning, all these places, they usually want stuff behind their firewall that's more affordable, but it's also giving them the vendor uh, or freedom from vendor lock-in that open source. So there's more control. So it's a control issue, it's an integration issue, it is a, a fast innovation issue by the community helping, supporting, augmenting, it is a price issue, and all these different things proprietary cannot do. But so far, that's why open source, which has tremendously picked up lately, Kultura is doing phenomenally well in the video realm, other companies are doing well. There's one other caveat, which is why open source could do well financially. I say there's no dissonance between... I was going to ask you about uh, that. So there's no dissonance between doing good and doing well. We do good and we do well. And it's you do that if you do right. So how's so how what's do you do the right? what's the business model? Support, maintenance, professional services. That's what made Red Hat the three billion dollar public company. Mm -hmm. So it made MySQL be bought for a billion dollars. We have a lot of money through that. Enterprises do it themselves, and they say, "I'm going to give you some of the money to help me sustain that, support that, uh, you know, integrate, do different things." But that's half. And here comes the that's conversation. That's the consulting part. With it's with not just consulting; it's development. It's also recurring license fees to say. I'm going to give you a full support for the year Got it. to make sure that it's debugged, it's not community supported, it's mm -hmm. culture supported, you have the regular community stuff but we actually make support. And if you, instead of having 20, 30 people building from scratch your video technology, and instead of going for a SaaS company and paying that amount for gazillions, get it for free, add on top of it some money that you pay us to sh support you, then you can have only two people. So look at the savings. Yeah, no, that uh, makes and sense. And look at the fact that instead of building a loan, you're doing best to breed from scratch when it's not your core functionality, not your core technology. Instead, you use somebody else. Today, nobody builds databases. They use MySQL. It's mm -hmm. a no-brainer. You're not going to build it yourself, and you're not necessarily going to go to uh, Oracle, or maybe that's why Oracle bought Sun, because they needed to have that, because it was a wild card that was winning business. So similar to that, people go open source. All that is kind of a preface. And what about scalability? Is, how about yeah, what First about scalability? Yeah. SaaS, like okay. how to get that money? So, the conversation in the panel yesterday was why open source companies are going down SaaS. And the example I've given with Kultura is so now we've given away this free ability behind a firewall, self hosted, secure, integratable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But often these same customers come back and say, thank you, 
and I know I have this freedom from Leonard Locke and I can always switch and do things, but you actually have the best ability to provide me ongoing service as well because A, you have economies of scale because you can support all, and B, you can create a network effect. So if we need to do syndication, we cannot do this alone, but you have all these websites, you can be in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. If we're doing video advertising, we cannot do this alone at high CPMs, you have all this inventory. If we're doing video search engine optimization, we cannot do this alone, we need your large aggregated high page rank to do it. So we provide SaaS on top of our big network, although the key point that uses it by way of product is open source. So they use our tools, if you may, we give the stick for free and charge for the knife. Then we give the actual ongoing recurring services and you can enjoy the best of both worlds, which is penetration rate from open source, development quickness from open source, with a high margin recurring revenue, ongoing contracts of SaaS, they come together. You've seen that in Drupal and Acquia, you've seen that in WordPress and WordPress.com, you see it again in and again in different open source companies. And is there um, a different, uh, different experience for the end user? It's a wonderful question because, you know, there's all of what I've said so far was why the B2B works. Right, absolutely. And you're asking what about the C, what about the guy at the end? So yeah. to start with, the, the, the product has to sell itself by its nature, by its features. Mozilla isn't selling more Firefoxes because it's open source. They're selling it because it's better or is equal to or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the same goes to Linux supporting large enterprises because it's more reliable, more sustainable, not just because it's open source. It's mm -hmm. a mean, not an end. What happens through the fact that it's a mean and because it could be self-hosted and because it's easier to integrate is that we have so much developments across it. And so, mm -hmm. It's so feature rich and we could expedite innovation so quickly mm -hmm. and have such a large install base of active people contributing that the result is a tremendous product. Now when you take that product that is so advanced, together with zero price, which it doesn't get cheaper, together with the most amount of integrations and the ease of control and all that stuff, then bang, you have that winning proposition, which is where the world is going. And, you know, Google's going with Chrome, and Intel has open source, and Adobe puts Strobe, Akamai hosts an open video player. All these companies understand that the product could be given for free and set alone and set out there if you could then recoup it by service and if you can amass the economies of scale and have this in-depth partnerships by dropping the walled gardens, by enabling complete freedom. And the beauty about it is it democratizes media. We've established a coalition of companies called the Open Video Alliance with all the top companies around in video and calling and asking for everybody to take part in this. And the result would be people in Iran taking clips, putting it up, coming it up. Yeah, the whole as, thing as opens video becomes simpler and simpler, and more simpler, people are cheaper. Encoders become open. Um, encoders that have specific license schemes to them are like saying people on the web, you cannot write text without me controlling it. Text is free. Speech is free. Video mm -hmm. should be free. Everybody should be able to do everything. But that's the encoding level. Building a video application should be free. Should be flexible. Should be open. Should be comfortable. You should be able to do it yourself. That's what Kultura is there, and that's I think my favorite to. line, is what, you, what you just said, is drop the wall. You know, get drop rid of the, the wall, wall and make it easy and simple for anyone to be able to use. Bingo, and then I like the other one. No dissonance between doing good and doing well. While we do all that, we're actually doing well. We're doing well financially. You could have the cake and eat it too. Open source companies do that all the time. It's great. Lastly, where can people learn more? Is it Kultura.com? Kultura.com and obviously Kultura.org. It is in environment for everybody to come and contribute. All the code is there. Take it, use it, abuse it, please. Great, thanks very much, Ron. Thank you.